The following is a special presentation of HBO Sports. To do everything he could not do or would not do. He wasn't as lucky as I am, but he was a great fighter. Now Tito has a chance to finish what his father began. He puts together a combination of dad's experience and determination with his own much better luck. Tito's needed the whole package because he's been knocked down in four different fights. But each time, Trinidad has come back to knock his opponents out. Tonight, he goes for his 23rd knockout in 27 fights. In that moment when I have gotten knocked down, I often really think that my fellow Puerto Ricans are counting on me and waiting for me to get up. And yeah, I like to recall the next uh, great Puerto Rican champion. And that's what I am uh, shooting for, and that's what I really want. Tonight, family and country watch expectantly as Felix Tito Trinidad takes his next step toward his almost predetermined destiny. From the convention center in Atlantic City, New Jersey, where tonight HBO Sports presents a welterweight boxing doubleheader. First, hard-hitting title holder Felix Trinidad faces a tough, impressive challenger from the Empire State, Larry Barnes. Then, Pernell Whitaker tries for another shutout, this time going against veteran Jake Rodriguez. Both fights are scheduled for 12 rounds. This bastion of boxing on the boardwalk becomes, for the moment, the capital of the welterweight division as two star fighters move toward a possible confrontation and a unification of the welterweight championship, possibly as early as 1996. And hello again, everybody. I'm Jim Lampley. We welcome all of you boxing fans to this evening with the welterweights, an evening which we hope can lead to bigger and better business down the road if both of the overwhelming favorites, Trinidad and Whitaker, are able to win tonight. Working with me as always, HBO boxing analyst Larry Merchant. Larry, in, in recent months, a lot of boxing experts have elevated Roy Jones Jr. to a notch above Pernell Whitaker in the ongoing battle for supremacy as the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. That's because Jones has been scoring spectacular knockouts and Whitaker has been going the distance in a fashion that some find less impressive than what he was able to do before. What can he do to regain his top-notch status, and can he get it done tonight? Well, not unless he scores a spectacular knockout, which isn't his style, and perhaps if he goes down into the audience and finds Roy Jones and cuffs him around a little bit, <laughs> that might help. But, but actually, as unlikely as it seems, he can vault back over Jones in, in 1996 for this simple reason. The welterweight divisions from 140 to 147 pounds are the most talent rich in all of boxing. He's got some major opponents out there and Roy Jones in the middleweight divisions doesn't as yet. Of all of those talented fighters in the welterweight division, the most talented it is assumed and the only one who has expressed a sincere desire to get in the ring with Pernell Whitaker is here tonight. That's the man we have been touting for you, Felix Trinidad. I've never seen him in person, Jim, and I am anxiously looking forward to checking him out. Indeed, for us, that's a lot of the story of tonight, our first chance to see Felix Trinidad in person and to show him to you. And, uh, of course, HBO boxing expert George Foreman with us, as always. The one dark cloud on the Trinidad horizon, George, is what was mentioned in the feature piece that opened the show, his propensity for getting knocked down. Five knockdowns in four different fights, something that his trainers and handlers ought to be worried about? Well, the old saying is when the going gets tough, 
the tough gets up and get going. Trinidad, in my mind, has gotten up five times, and that's what that makes it, it gives him a plus in my mind because with a young fighter, you never know what's going to happen. He's gotten up and won each time. These knockdowns have come in the early rounds. He's seen as something of a slow starter, and as George points out, each time he's gotten up and come on to win those fights by knockout. So we get ready for Felix Trinidad against Larry Barnes. And here's the tale of the tape that shows you various of Trinidad's perceived advantages in the fight. He's eight years younger. He's five inches taller. He weighed in right at the weight limit of 147, and some believe that he's having trouble making that limit. But we shall see as time goes on, and he's got a six-inch reach advantage over Larry Barnes. Larry Merchant? I've heard he's had to strain to make that weight for at least a year. It could hurt him down the future with a more formidable opponent we don't know about tonight. Here's a, a look at their activity. You can see Trinidad is much more active and much more accurate. And here are some Trinidad numbers to show you how active he is in different rounds. As you can see, he is least active in the early rounds, and those are the rounds when he has suffered many of those flash knockdowns that he has arisen from. And the rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Larry Bunn's Felix for Trinidad fight will be 12 rounds. The usual rules will be seen on our screen. The unusual rule tonight in our first fight concerns cuts caused by accidental headbutts. We go to the scorecards and a headbutt after six rounds have been completed. Before that, it's a technical draw. Jim. All right. Thanks very much, Harold. And the fighters preparing now to enter the ring. And first it will be the veteran Larry Barnes. Even though he has a record of 39 and 1, he enters here for his very first world title fight. Barnes is a terrific kid with an unusual background. I've never heard of a fighter before whose main job is as a school aide in which he works with a swimming team at Mount Vernon High School in New York City. He himself was a diver in high school. Gotta love a guy who uses entry music that even the folks in my generation can remember and identify with. How about that, George? We know this song. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> well, some of us. <laughs> and you saw the record for Barnes, 39 wins, one loss. That loss was to the then past 40 years old, Saul Mambi. And uh, he's only had 15 knockouts. He is, by his own admission, not a power puncher. Harold Letterman, who was at that fight, has told us that Barnes definitely won it. So Harold Letterman thinks it's 40 and 0. The rest of us will just have to accept 39 and 1. And now Barnes waits in the ring as there's a momentary delay in Felix Trinidad's exit from his dressing room. The most amount of money this young man has ever made in a fight was $15,000. Tonight his purse is close to a quarter of a million dollars. So many of the fighters in this sport are sweet, sensitive people. Larry Barnes is as nice a man as you could ever want to meet. The question is whether this fight is diving off the cliffs of, of Acapulco for him. on Trinidad, 14 rounds in the last 14 months. He's been getting quick knockouts, and he's been having long layoffs between fights. Which is one of the reasons he, he is trying to uh, break his contract with Don King, which is the only way that a, a fight with Whitaker could happen. He is in court in that effort right now. The most money he has ever made is $300,000. He'll make a million tonight.
Trinidad with a relatively small number of amateur fights turned pro very early rather than to try to go the Olympic route, which might have been available to him coming from Puerto Rico. But he got started at a tender age and as we've mentioned at age 22 gets ready for his 27th professional fight. Has some impressive knockouts on his dossier. There you see his father who trains him says that they have avoided the usual problems that exist between fathers and sons in the ring by being flexible, which is to say giving Trinidad, the young Trinidad, some distance and space and not being all over him. And a look at the record, 26-0 and 0, 22 knockouts for Felix Trinidad. Let's go up to the ring to Michael Buffer for the fight introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Atlantic City's Convention Hall, where tonight, by way of Bally's Park Place Casino Hotel on the boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey, main events monitor in association with your undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Budweiser. This Bud's for you. Present a double rumble in the welterweight division. These bouts are sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr. The first title bout is also sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation, IBF President Robert W. Lee, oh, Supervisor Ringside, Benedetto Montella. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system will be Samuel Conde, Julio Mancini, and Shafiq Rashada. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, referee Benji Estevez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the first of two times from Atlantic City, New Jersey, uh, let's get ready to rumble! 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Wilderweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black and weighing in at 146 pounds. His professional record, an outstanding one of 39 and one, 15 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, the pride and joy of Mount Vernon, New York, the number one ranked IBF challenger yeah. in the world, yeah. Larry yeah. Nofi. opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner weighing in at 147 pounds his professional record 26 and 0 22 KOs wearing in the ring tonight red with white and blue trim senoras y senores con cupe alto puerto rico presentando and Victor The undefeated Felix Tito Te di las instrucciones, obedezca todas las reglas con, y los órdenes que te dé durante el combate. Obey my commands during the match. Te protege durante el combate todo el tiempo. Protect yourself at all times. Buena suerte. Good luck. Touch up. It's great to want to be great, Jim. And Trinidad clearly does want to be great. Let's see how great he is tonight.
Barrios of Trinidad's camp followers after the weigh-in yesterday expressed surprise at how Larry Barnes looked. They complimented his build and said, this guy's stronger than we thought he was. And he lands a left hook in the early going as Trinidad backs up and gets ready to try to establish the jab. So Barnes coming out aggressively. He said he would put his head on Trinidad's chest and keep it there. And it looks like he is as good as his word. He's already been hit with a nice left hook on the side of the head. Believe me, it wasn't a slip, those hooks. is going to try to stay inside against Trinidad. He must get inside of that punching range. How can he do it, George? Well, you, you got to concentrate less on landing a punch as you... You got to concentrate on getting closer to the opponent. Forget about the punch and just get your head, touch your shoulder, then start punching. What about the big man, little man thing here with Barnes trying to punch up at the much taller Trinidad and Trinidad coming down with punches? Does that give Felix a big advantage? No doubt about it, being smaller sometimes can work to your advantage. But you got to stay down, only come up to punch. Give him up, give him up, Larry. Trinidad with an uppercut. If Barnes stays in this position, uppercuts are going to work for Felix. One thing you don't want is Felix Trinidad to get his jab in rhythm. Then Barnes is going to have a hard night. Try to keep moving your head so he never get a good rhythm with his left jab. Barnes should be concentrating on it. Barnes not close enough right now to execute his fight plan. If he's going to have a chance to do what he thought he could do, he must stay well inside of Trinidad's jab. That's difficult against a fighter who not only punches well, but as you can see, moves well, too. Trinidad getting more and more comfortable now against Barnes. Seemed to be a little thrown off at first by the bobbing and the hyper-aggression of Barnes trying to get inside. Haymaker left. One of them landed a glancing blow. Good, sharp, short left hook by Trinidad. Barnes is going to have to keep his right hand up as he comes inside, or Trinidad will land that left hook at will. Now you're going to see something, folks, you've never seen before in a major fight, and that is Larry Barnes as the man in the nickel mask. You, you've heard of end swells, which are made of, the, of, the, of a copper compound to, to reduce swelling. They have a mask that they put on his entire face to reduce swelling. What do you okay. think of this, George? You want the idea, you I think so, but I don't like the idea of the bottom. nose being covered at any time. The body's working for you. You've so got to you just open the nose yeah, hole, you, you think it's a great working. idea, Yeah, huh? you just got to eh, exempt the that nose that from that covering up because you can't have anything okay, pressing on that man. nose. Keep your hands off, Bobby Weave, but after you finish punch, punch. Yeah. In this corner, our interpreter is Hector Garcia. Take it easy. Just be careful and take it easy. If, if you hit at the body, if he comes in forward, just hit the body. Trinidad threw 85 punches in round number one. That's an extremely busy opening round for Trinidad, who in his recent fights has been starting much slower than that. This looks like a bush going up against a tree, George. <laughs> you know, it's strange that Trinidad, he's small looking, but he was able to deliver a good left hook to the body, just like his daddy told him to. Good sharp punches by Trinidad. Barnes still not getting close enough to get inside of Trinidad's jab and his power punches. 
Barnes is right at home lunging in with those left hooks, wild shots. That's what he do. He'll do that all night. But in most of his wins against lesser fighters, George, he's been able to out-hustle and outwork them. It's going to be awfully tough to do against a guy as skilled as Felix Trinidad. And Felix Trinidad has got to spend some time on building up his points, too. He's throwing a lot of power shot, but he's got to make sure that he's willing and ready to go the distance. Barnes wrestling his way in to throw a left hook to the body. Trinidad steps back and starts to try to pick his shots again. Young fighter like Trinidad probably missing more big shots in these early rounds than he's ever has before, George. Is it, you think it bothers him? At the same time, that's what I said earlier, he should try to build up some points at the same time. Be ahead on the score in case you don't get that knockout. He's missing some shots he need not even be throwing at this point. Round two, a little bit more cautious round for Trinidad, more like what we expected as he kind of eyeballs Larry Barnes's hyper-aggressive, hyper-bobbing style. Trinidad missing with the right hand that might have done some damage after landing that short left. For the first time, Felix Trinidad has been able to bob and weave underneath a shot. And from where Barnes is working, he's going to have a hard enough time seeing the target, much less hitting it. Yeah. He looks like somebody on the beach looking for coins. His eyes almost straight down on the canvas much of the time. Trinidad missed one right hand, landed one. Barnes landed a wild left hook. Breathe in. Breathe in. Just be careful. Tito, Just take it easy. We're going to the bien. third round. Ahora, now, ahora necesito, óyeme, I want óyeme, you to listen to me. Va a estar ella. Move that jab. Tú la derecha, él when, trata de when you move that, that right hand, he's trying to move his left. When, he moves, when you move your right, you move, he's moving his left. When he comes in, Hit him in, the, in his body. Just hit that body. Weave, hook right hand, and back downstairs. Because don't give him some side moves now, okay? Just because you're cutting off. You're doing okay. Missing a lot of punches. Stay downstairs. Uh -huh. Don't worry okay. about upstairs. Uh -huh. Stay downstairs. Okay. Stay close. Stay close. Okay? Just concentrate. Relax, man. Because, because on, that mask is chilled, his corner people say it helps to revive him very quickly. Yeah, they also believe it brings down his heart rate by cooling the body. Giving him more stamina over the long course of the fight. Barnes threw only 30 punches in round number two. As he comes out for the third round, he's standing a little bit straighter up and in a better position to try to throw. But that might make more openings for Trinidad. right hand missed by Barnes and Trinidad was able to land a couple of those punches in return. Short left hook inside to the body by Trinidad. Trinidad's corner has been telling him to throw to the body and he's the only one being active in the body. You would think that Barnes wanting to slow him down would have landed more shots to the body by now, but he hasn't. Yeah, particularly if you think a guy has had trouble making weight and might be a little dehydrated, that's all the more reason to go to the body early and try to take his legs away. You would think so, but if you can see from the camera, Trinidad's body looks awful dry. When the fighter's having a rough time making a weight, he'll be wet. You'll see the size be a little more puffy. The size not that puffy, so he hasn't had that much of a hard time getting that body weight down. Left hook was partially blocked there. 
Trinidad is getting some opportunities here in round three to set his feet and throw those power punches. Talk about Trinidad trying to go to Barnes's body, George. Larry's so much smaller. Five-inch height advantage for Trinidad. How hard is it to get down to the level you've got to get to to throw those body punches? A good right hand by Barnes, by the way, but at the same time, Trinidad is able to stoop and bend his knees and get the same height every now and then. That's how he's able to do it, which is very courageous for a tall fighter. As you saw then, he actually weaves that left jab. Hook. Best punch of this round by Trinidad. Barnes has been in against some, some guys who can crack, notably Glenwood Brown, back pretty close to the time when Glenwood was good, and Barnes weathered that storm and won the fight by decision. in the dressing room, awaiting his turn in the ring, Fernell Whitaker. Acknowledged king of the welterweight division, generally regarded as one of the two best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world. Some would still choose him as the best. His opponent tonight, Jake the Snake Rodriguez, and Fernell with his beloved mirror, visualizing the fight as it will happen. Vaseline, Vaseline, Sam. Okay, Larry. Concentrate, just folks. Concentrate. I got the ring off. Relax. Yeah, yeah. No, you don't go. You do everything. You gotta punch more. You gotta punch. Straight punch. You won't do any LBs. Okay. Turn around. Get fancy too. Okay. The hook downstairs. You're doing great, baby. Felix Trinidad connecting at 57 percent, according to punch stat numbers so far. That's the same percentage at which he connected against a strong fighter named Oba Carr en route to a knockout of Carr. But. But you know he's he's like a race car that's usually uh, in fifth gear or a higher gear who is doing more backing up more in reverse than he's probably used to and so he's not really settled down to land his his best power shots very often there you see him trying to stand his ground a little bit more instead of just moving well what you try to do as a boxer you get that tight circle. You want to move, but at the same time, you don't want to get from in the middle of that ring. Trinidad is doing an excellent job this round. He's moving, but in a circular fashion. And trying to get the song going with his jab. You tap, 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 tap. That's why you train to music, so you can get a rhythm to what you're doing. As Barnes settles down and doesn't lunge in quite so much, he becomes a more consistent target for Trinidad and gives him a better chance to get the rhythm going with the jab. And here it comes. He's got a rhythm and a, and a little rhythm going right now. Trinidad has. That's what Barnes shouldn't allow him to do. Well, Barnes is going to have to go back to lunging wildly. The more unorthodox Barnes can be, the better shot he'll have at throwing Trinidad. Trinidad comes in to try to finish. This is a legitimate knockout puncher at 147 pounds. I thought he was playing a little possum. He was stung but not badly hurt and looking for a big opening. Now he may be hurt. What a game kid he is, Larry Barnes. An overachiever against one of the most talented fighters in the ring. And what about the precision of Trinidad's finishing effort, George? Is he doing the right He's thing? He's been told to really respect this guy. He's in with the number one contender, so you heard him. Start back from the from the bottom and go back up again. Go to the body. If you get too wild, this guy's still strong. He's been a number one contender Barnes has for a long time. Very patient, clinical effort by Felix Trinidad. And he is racking up the damage against Larry Barnes. And a body shot put him down. Three, four, five, six. That was somebody shot. Seven, eight, 
As advertised, that was some finish, took his time, waited for the opportunity, and did a terrific job of closing the deal. And you see there why Felix Trinidad is being compared as a two-fisted punter to some of the greatest fighters who have ever fought. Well, George, he didn't look like a 22-year-old as he carried out that execution. I thought for certain he would go wild and start lunging in for that finish once he heard him the first time. I was shocked to see him be so patient. Sometimes that's what you need, your dad in your corner sometimes, someone you really respect to teach you properly, take your time. Only a father can do that properly. Sometimes trainers are better at it, but a father is the best. He showed patience, confidence, precision and technique all in the same package not like a 22 year older at all so felix trinidad makes the most of his hbo debut and let's take a look back at the first big punch that hurt Barnes early in the round that short left hook had been a weapon all the way through what well, it all became about because he was able to slip that left jab. Now he's taking his time, sticks his head back, not to get wild on the corner. Jab, back to the body a little bit, uppercuts, but watch what you're doing. Moves him to better position. Even when he's wobbling, he doesn't get wild. Gets left foot right back, set again, double right hand, left hook. Watch what you're doing most of anything. Get back. You don't want to be caught by a lucky shot. And here comes the end, and watch for the sensational body shot right there. That did it. And when you get knocked down truly with a body shot after receiving those kind of hit shots, it's seldom that you get up. Well, it took three plus rounds for Larry Barnes to settle down and adopt the posture of a conventional fighter. But once he did, he was too easy a target for Felix Trinidad. Trinidad has an excellent left jab. And that jab start hitting you an occasional hook in there. Hardly any way to protect yourself. Well, let's go up to Michael Buffer now for the official particulars on this knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Benji Estevez calls a halt to the bout, stopping at the count of eight. The official time, two minutes, 54 seconds of round number four. The winner, and still the undefeated IBF welterweight champion of the world, Felix. Tito Trinidad. Saludos, mi gente de Cupero, quiero. Mi gente de Puerto Rico también. Let's go into the ring. Con congratulations on a spectacular finish. Okay, Felix, tell us what was going through your mind in the early rounds because he was such a difficult unorthodox opponent to get measured quiero saber qué lo que estaba pasando por tu mente en los primeros asaltos que él estaba él era un poco uh, estaba un poco duro de pegarle sí bueno es eh, que es que Larry Barnes es un peleador bien incómodo se baja mucho uh, Larry Barnes is a very uncomfortable fighter he, he's very low and and were you feeling uncomfortable fighting him in turn? Te sentías tú un poco inconfortable peleando con él? No, bueno, sí se hizo se hizo un poquito incómodo en su primer asalto, pero poco a poco fui adaptándome al ritmo de pelea. It was very uncomfortable in the first few the first few rounds, but I, I got used to it after the, after the couple of rounds. In the last round, it seemed you were a little bit more settled down and a little bit more accurate in your punches. Was that because you finally got his rhythm and knew how to deal with him? En los últimos asaltos estabas un poco más confortable y te sentías mejor. ¿Por qué? ¿Qué te dio hacer eso? Bueno, mi gran condición, eh, mi gran condición y poco a poco yo siempre me adapto poco a poco, round por round. His conditioning was uh, superb and round by round he just got better. All right, we're going to tell him, we're going to try to show the knockdown and ask him to describe it to us, uh, particularly that vicious body shot that really ended the fight. Uh, it, we'll get it up here in a minute, fellas. Uh, tell, tell us about the body shot that really ended. 
quiere que nos, nos diga del, el, el golpe al cuerpo que le diste que fue el que terminó la pelea? Bueno, yo quiero decirle que yo pego bien duro con la mano de ancho y izquierda. El, el Ari Iván es un, es, un, es un boxeador que aguanta mucho golpe. I, I just know that I can hit with my left and with my right just as hard, and Larry Barnes uh, can hold a punch. Asimila mucho golpe. He can hold a punch. All right, talk to us about Pernell Whitaker. There are many talented welterweights out there, but you're the only one that seems to truly want to fight him. Why? Uh, háblanos de Whitaker. Uh, hay mucho, muchos peleadores allá afuera en, ese, en, en esa división, pero eres tú el que quiere pelear con Whitaker. Sí, bueno, esa pelea este, a, a él le interesa, a mí también me interesa mucho. Yo espero que este año que viene, 96, ya esa pelea se esté efectuando. Ya. Yeah, he's interested, and uh, so, so it's uh, uh, Tito's interested, and uh, in 1996, that fight can go on. Thank you very much. Congratulations once again. Thank you. Yeah, he wants to say hello to somebody. He wants to thank uh, uh, Levin and uh, for helping us so much. All right, a commercial for Fred Levin, the lawyer who is trying to get him out of his present contract with Don King. Back to ringside, fellas. And the Fred Levin Association is what puts Roy Jones Jr. in Trinidad's camp and vice versa. They're good buddies. Heck, if he went up 21 pounds, he might be a credible opponent for Roy Jones. But first things first, as a welterweight, how can he get any better than that? He's very good. He's got the right movement. He doesn't want to sit and slug all the time, knowing that he's the puncher. So he's got wisdom along with that puncher power. Let's take a look at some punch stat numbers, which will reflect Felix Trinidad's total domination of Larry Barnes. Barnes throwing only 164 punches into the fourth round, and he knew he would have to be busier and do better than that against Felix Trinidad, who landed at 60% with an effective mixture of jabs and power punches. Let's go up to Larry and find out what Barnes thought of Trinidad. Okay, Larry, yeah, Larry what, can, what can you do with a guy who not only punches that hard, but also moves so well? Larry, you know, I can't take nothing away from the guy. The guy's great. I thought the shot was borderline, but I ain't gonna make no excuses. The guy is that pound for pound, one of the best. And I knew what I was coming into this fight. I can't, I ain't got no excuses. I want to thank HBO. I want to thank uh, Lou Duke for giving me the shot. How, how hard did he punch? Because it seemed finally in that, in that fourth round that he started to get down on his feet and start to throw throw with with more leverage well like, you know I, I thought he was gonna fight me but he moved he moved like a snake you know I tried to beat a mongoose and, you know cut him down but uh, he wouldn't go for it and uh, I think if I would survived the round I, I think the fight would have went the distance but what are you gonna do that's boxing thank you much thank you thank you very much Larry you're boxing too Jim 41st fight for Larry Barnes first time he's ever been knocked out First time he's ever been in with an opponent like Felix Trinidad. So that's the first of our two main events. Much more to come now as we take a look at one of the other leading lights of this talent-packed welterweight division. Man, many regard as one of the two best fighters in the world. If you think of a boxing ring as a blank canvas, then Pernell Whitaker is boxing's Picasso, boxing's Van Gogh. Each time he fights, Whitaker is out to paint the perfect picture. Notice the foundation. Everything begins with hand speed. Pernell Whitaker's greatest works are painted with the quickest hands in the business. 